from West Virginia Public Broadcasting. Support for the legislature today is provided by the following. AARP West Virginia, your ally for real possibilities in the Mountain State. Online at aarp.org slash wv. The West Virginia Higher Education Policy Commission, working to double the degrees produced annually in our state by 2025 through increased opportunities for West Virginians to earn the credentials today's economy demands. The High Technology Foundation, building a stronger West Virginia, online at wvhtf.org. At the legislature today, a bill to protect religious freedoms is up for a vote, but now includes provisions expressly prohibiting lawsuits against non-discrimination ordinances. Senators debate tax cuts and tax hikes on the final day to approve bills originating in the chamber. And the majority leaders of the House and Senate join us to discuss the lingering priorities for the GOP as the session begins to wind down. That conversation coming up on the legislature today. Good evening, I'm Ashton Mara. Today was the deadline for Senate bills to be approved by senators and House bills to be approved by delegates. It's crossover day at the State House, and lawmakers will now begin to focus on bills that have seen a vote in at least one chamber. Those bills and of course the looming budget. Senate Majority Leader Mitch Carmichael and House Majority Leader Daryl Coles discuss with us this morning their priorities in the final days of this session, including finding a way to balance the 2017 budget. So gentlemen, thank you both for your time this morning. We appreciate having you. It's great to be here, thank Glad you. Glad to be here. So let's start with, you know, we're heading into crossover day. There are plenty of bills to be taken up in both chambers, but we're also getting close to the end of the session itself. Senator, let's start with you. What are priorities for the Senate as we head into these final days? Well, what I would like to say first is that we feel we've had an incredible uh, productive session uh, to this point. And from uh, this point forward, in terms of priorities, we recognize that the budget is under extreme stress. We've been working on this for uh, this entire period. And as we come into these last uh, 10 days or so, the, uh, the work that we've done needs to come to fruition in terms of putting that budget together. And in terms of the roads, our roads have been an extreme priority. We hear over and over from our citizens about the poor conditions of our road. Frankly, they've been left to deteriorate over the past many years. Uh, and we are aggressively moving to put in place uh, mechanisms to improve our roads and provide our citizens with better infrastructure and transportation systems. That is a big priority as we move into these last few days. Delegate, what do you see as a priority in the House? Well, I, I certainly agree with, with the, the Senate's take on that. The budget is the big item left. Uh, we, we're, we're very b busy in the House right now. The crossover day, tremendous amount of bills, and, and uh, maybe some of them not as important as others, but they're important to individual members. We're trying to get those across the, the finish line of crossover day, but it is the budget is the main focus. And, and uh, we have indeed had a good session up to this point, focusing on the economy and jobs and, and trying to get folks back to work. But the budget is the big item that uh, is sucking up all the air in the House right now. Well, then let's talk about the budget a little bit. We'll wait until after the end of this session. There'll be a special session for you all to finalize that budget. But there's a bill that the Senate will vote on today that decreases both the coal and and natural gas severance taxes. At this point, that's what the bill says. Mm -hmm. Initially, it was just a decrease for coal. But, you know, a, a question for both of you. Is cutting taxes, are cutting taxes for these industries a good move for West Virginia when we're facing such a budget deficit? Delegate, do you want to start? Well, certainly it would be nice. Uh, we can't do everything all at one time, and that's where the budget process comes together when we pick our priorities about what we can do. Uh, coming up to crossover day, we have to keep some bills alive to give that process of putting the budget together the vehicles it needs to have those options. But uh, I, I agree, that would be difficult to do. We're trying to maintain uh, funding for, for education, K through 12 education, higher education. Road funding is a, a great priority. 
Uh, all those things come together in a huge appropriation bill called the budget, but uh, we need to pass some uh, legislation ahead of time to do certain things to shift money in the budget, and we're focused on that right now at Crossover Day. Senator, we're facing a $466 million deficit in the 2017 budget, which is the year that these tax cuts would start. Is it the best idea for West Virginians to be cutting taxes right now? I think it's absolutely the best idea. What we found with our uh, oil and gas and our coal industry is that we are uncompetitive in terms of our tax structure uh, as it relates to our other states and the states that surround us, the other producing states. And it is uh, it's just wrong for us to uh, impose upon our producers and our job producing people uh, a tax that put, makes us uncompetitive with the rest of the nation. And so to the extent that we put people back to work, we get people off the unemployment rolls, a job provides uh, uh, a sense of worth and an ability to earn a living as opposed to relying on the government. I think in the end of the day, what happens when we cut these taxes and make us competitive we still impose a tax on them, but we make it competitive with our states around us that we put people back to work and it eases the, uh, the uh, strain on our budget and it helps us uh, in provide revenue for the vital services that we need in state government. Well, on the opposite end of the spectrum, the Senate will vote on a bill today to increase some DMV fees and some taxes on vehicle purchases, mm -hmm. and that money will be dedicated to the road fund. It's something that you both mentioned was a priority for the chambers. Senator, how do you see that going over today? I, I believe that bill will pass, and also, Ashton, I want to point out that that bill also provides money for general revenue. Uh, and so, with that bill, with passage of that bill, we will provide over $200 million to our road fund. Uh, this goes an enormous, it takes an incredible leaps and steps toward fixing the problems that have been left to this new majority to fix in terms of our roads. So uh, uh, we're willing to take the difficult votes and ask the people of West Virginia to pay approximately nine cents a day uh, for better roads and better infrastructure projects and ease the problem with our uh, general revenue budget. So I think, it's a, I think that bill will pass today uh, overwhelmingly. Delegate, no matter what the financial state of the, of the state is, it's always difficult to pass a tax increase. Is it going to be able to pass in the House? Are we going to see this bill be taken up? It's going to get serious consideration. There is a, a, certainly a problem putting the budget together this year. The revenues uh, have been dropping in uh, several different sectors, sales tax, income tax, gambling revenues, uh, severance taxes. So we, we need to be bold and make bold changes. And, and the highway funding, I, I agree with my, my, my Senate colleague that the highway funding is important and we've made several changes, but uh, let's not overlook the prevailing wage recalculation. That's going to save us money. We've done an audit for highways. We're doing some things to save money, to use the money uh, more efficiently, more wisely. And, uh, and tax reform is an important part, and tax revenue, no doubt, is uh, something the House is going to have to consider. Well, you mentioned prevailing wage. That was a pretty controversial bill this session. But we've still got another controversial bill that you all are working on, and that's the Religious Freedom Restoration Act, which in the Senate has become the Religious Freedom Protection Act. That bill will also be up for a vote today. And, Senator, you gave a very emotional speech about the, about the bill on the floor yesterday. Why is that bill so important to you, or why does it make you feel that way? Well, I think at uh, any time we touch the intersection of public policy with our faith, uh, it becomes a, an area that can generate a lot of emotion, a lot of feelings, and uh, there's nothing more sacred to, the, to our country, frankly, than the protection of our religious liberties. That's upon the principle upon which we've been founded. We want to do everything possible to protect those religious liberties and, and, and allow the free expression of religion within the citizens of West Virginia. But we also want to do everything uh, that we should be doing to recognize the diversity and the human dignity and the value of each life in whatever way they choose to live. And whether we agree or disagree with the lifestyle choices that people select, they have the right to do that. And we want to protect that right as well. And so we think in the Senate we've struck that proper balance. Uh, and I have the most incredible respect for my colleagues in the House, and I'm sure that they will do uh, what is best, uh, what they feel is best with this bill as it moves back to the House. And uh, we'll work through this process, but at the end of the day, I want to assure you, 
my colleagues in the House and the people of West Virginia that we want to protect religious liberty and recognize the diversity of our citizens. Well, Delegate, this is where the two chambers diverge a little bit. The Senate has approved an amendment to protect the non-discrimination ordinances passed in some cities across the state. The House considered that amendment several times and it was never approved. There are some other changes in the bill as well as it came from the House. How do you see this going, or is, is this going to head to a conference committee? It, it, it could. I mean, that's that's the process that's laid out. Is the House uh, has their position, the Senate has made some changes. Whenever we get the bill back, we'll take a look at it, see if there's some changes we could make, and uh, perhaps put together a conference committee and see if we can come to some uh, agreeable resolution. But uh, the House really feels strongly about religious liberty and protecting uh, the First Amendment rights of the people of West Virginia. And, and I expect uh, this, is, uh, this topic is no different from many others, where conference committees might have to be put together and some sort of compromise developed between the Senate and the House. Well, predictions, is this going to be one of those bills that on the final night comes down to the last minute? I hope not. I, I really want us to be the focus on uh, jobs, growth, opportunity, economic uh, prosperity in West Virginia. I think that's where our focus needs to be. This bill, is, while it's important, I don't think it needs to come down to, you know, last second negotiating on something as fundamental as religious liberties. Senate Majority Leader Mitch Carmichael, House Majority Leader Daryl Coles, thank you very much. Thank you. We'll get to the Senate's vote on the Religious Freedom Restoration Act in just a minute, but first, a bill to generate some $300 million for the state's road fund was approved in the chamber today. Senate Bill 555 increases the state's gasoline tax by three cents per gallon when the wholesale price of gas drops below $2. The bill also raises DMV fees and the tax paid when purchasing a vehicle. Those dollars will be directed toward highway maintenance and construction projects. Senators also approved a bill today that will reduce reduce the state's severance tax on both coal and natural gas over the next two years. Proponents of the bill say the reduction will help aid the state's ailing industries, but those against it worry the provision will only further hurt a state budget that lawmakers are already struggling to balance. Here's a look at some of the debate on the floor today. There have been some technical difficulties with that story and we'll come back to in a moment. But first, during a session that lasted well into the evening yesterday, members of the Senate debated amendments to the Religious Freedom Protection Act. The bill sets a judicial standard for cases when an individual believes the government has substantially burdened his or her religious beliefs. During debate over an amendment that would prohibit suits from being filed against cities who have non-discrimination ordinances, Senate Majority Leader Mitch Carmichael gave an emotional speech in support of the change. Senator from Jackson. Thank you, Mr. President. This issue is not easy. And I rise in support of the gentleman's amendment. I prayed for clarity, wisdom, and discernment on this. I don't think I've ever mentioned our faith in a debate in this Senate chamber, or in the House chamber for that matter, even though, as the gentleman from the eighth said the other day, <clears throat> uh, frankly, I heard our clerk say one day that it colors and influences everything we do. And it should. 
It does and it should. I believe in the goodness of people. I want the poor to be rich and the weak to be strong. And when we build walls, we diminish that. To the aggrieved is a shield against discrimination any different than a sword to perpetrate the act? I don't know. I've never been, to my knowledge, discriminated against. You know, I come here every day. And really, in my life, with a joy. And people even mention it, you know. They say, God, you always seem happy. And I am. Because what's inside of me is better than what's outside. I just think this sends the wrong message, Mr. President. I think we need to value the human dignity and the, the goodness in people. I don't want this to be used. And I, and I know those who promote this do so with the best intentions. Everyone here is, I mean, I am just, you know, I, and I, I never quote scriptures, but one of my favorite scriptures is uh, to value others is better than yourself. And certainly, I do that here. And I, I just, I don't want us to go down this path. I just don't. I work hard for jobs and opportunity. And for those reasons, I would ask that we adopt this amendment, and then we can vote for this bill, allow it not to be used for discriminatory purposes to value the religious freedom and protection that we hold so dear and to recognize the human dignity and goodness of people that are different than us. Senators put that bill, which includes the amendment protecting municipalities, to a vote today. Rob Engel joins us with more about what happened on the floor. Thanks, Ashton. In a surprising vote on the floor this evening, House Bill 4012 died on a 7 to 27 vote. No member of the body stood to speak to the bill. Senate Judiciary Chair Charles Trump only told members after his explanation of the bill to vote their conscience. The bill had seen several changes since it was approved in the House of Delegates last month. The largest of those had, were added provisions that ensured the bill will not be used for discrimination. An amendment was also added to the bill that protects state, the state from lawsuits stemming from child vaccination laws. Several senators said they had received backlash for speaking against the House version of the bill yesterday. Senate President Bill Cole voted against the bill. For the Legislature Today, I'm Rob Engel. Unfortunately, we won't be able to bring you debate tonight on the bill to cut the coal and natural gas severance tax, but that bill was approved in the chamber 19 to 15, and you can see that debate on our website, wvpublic.org. While the senators debated that tax that impacts the amount of coal severance dollars collected by counties, members of the House took up a bill that would give those counties more control over how they spend the revenues. Liz McCormick reports. House Bill 4668 increases the threshold of coal severance taxes counties can use to pay salaries and employee benefits. State law says only a fourth of those severance dollars can be used to pay personnel, but the bill would increase the allowable share from one-fourth to one-half. Delegate Eric Householder of Berkeley County is the vice chairman of House Finance. He says this bill is beneficial for all counties in the state. Remember, all counties are participating in this coal revenue, so it will allow the counties and many municipalities for that matter to have more flexibility and you know what it could go towards paying a salary for a uh, deputy sheriff law enforcement whatever it may be so I see it's nothing but a positive uh, for the counties and municipalities 
Although it impacts all 55 counties, it was Kanawha County that brought the issue to lawmakers. Delegate Nancy Guthrie, a Democrat from Kanawha County, is one of the sponsors of the bill. She says the Kanawha County Commission uses the tax to pay the salaries of three sheriff's deputies who patrol the eastern portion of the county. Unless the county can increase the percentage of the tax used, she says declining tax collections could force the county to cut the pay or even the positions. We need to have those deputies in those communities policing and cutting down on crime. And they've been wonderful to do that. They're, they're really involved in the communities uh, and they know exactly what's going on and who's doing what. That's really invaluable for a community that has a high um, drug rate, has a high uh, rate of violence uh, because of the lack of jobs uh, in that area. The bill passed overwhelmingly 99 to 0 and now heads to the Senate. For the legislature today, I'm Liz McCormick in the House. This session, we've taken you behind the scenes at the State House to meet the staff that keeps the wheels turning. You've met doorkeepers, legislative photographers, and the House's clerk. Tonight, we meet his counterpart in the Senate, House, excuse me, Senate Clerk Clark Barnes. A former member of the chamber, Senator Barnes is in his second session in the new role. My name is Clark Barnes. I'm the clerk of the West Virginia Senate. You know, I'm a graduate of Payton City High School, a little Ohio Valley town, uh, sandwiched in between New Martinsville and Sistersville. Great place to grow up, blue collar town. Uh, loved it. When, uh, when I graduated from high school, I actually left immediately the day after I graduated, went to work on a ranch down in Tennessee, Murfreesboro, Tennessee, uh, called the Bill Rice Ranch. We raised about 200 head of, of, um, of horses. In the meantime, my folks had moved to Elkins, and uh, so I went to join them there in the fall and decided, uh, well, I kind of like the place. So stayed there, fell in love, and married a girl there. And uh, uh, from there, actually, I was called into military service a few years later. Spent uh, three years in the Corps of Engineers, was stationed at Fort Belvoir, Virginia, and Heidelberg, Germany. Then I went on to Davis and Elkins College. So 12 years ago, my arm was twisted, and someone said, you really need to run for state senate. And I did, and uh, uh, here I am. I ended up winning that election, surprising me, surprising a lot of people, and uh, that's how I got to the Senate. So I served for 10 years before I accepted the position of the Senate clerk here. There are a lot of responsibilities for being the clerk. The clerk is actually the administrator of the Senate, and there's varied responsibilities. But the first and most important responsibility is for us to pass legislation, to act legislatively. So my responsibility there is to ensure when we're in session that everything is running smoothly, that everyone has what they need to work with, that our sound systems are working properly, our technology is working properly, um, that um, uh, everyone is briefed as far as what we're, what we're going to do for the day, and uh, that we're, we're generally prepared to do the job and do the job right. We're responsible for putting out the Blue Book. The Blue Book is the information of, well, practically everything in the state. And uh, so we have a staff that's constantly working and updating on Blue Book information. Uh, we have people that are constantly working on rules uh, the rules are constantly being updated. Agencies are communicating uh, with us on what those rules are, and we've got some great people that work in that section as well. Now, when I was a senator, I came in, and all this information was on my desk, and everything was, you know, provided for me, and I went ahead and did my job. I had no idea, probably, that it took 60 people to actually make sure that that piece of paper was on my desk. This has been the Legislature Today. I'm Ashton Mara. Thanks for joining us.
Support for the legislature today is provided by the following. AARP West Virginia, your ally for real possibilities in the Mountain State. Online at aarp.org slash wv. The West Virginia Higher Education Policy Commission, working to double the degrees produced annually in our state by 2025 through increased opportunities for West Virginians to earn the credentials today's economy demands. The High Technology Foundation, building a stronger West Virginia, online at wvhtf.org. From West Virginia Public Broadcasting, 